The challenge of the particle system was to create effects that were fun and visually exciting, without being so over the top that no one could read their meaning in the game. In a typical match, there are so many effects on screen at the same time that the biggest danger is visual clutter. Therefore, the effects were refined to be cleaner and simpler. Those that were most important for gameplay were made easier to see, while those that were mainly eye candy were allowed to fall into the background. And vulnerability adds an element of pacing to the multiplayer experience, which otherwise tends to have fewer emotional highs and lows than a well-crafted single-player game. When an invulnerable medic and his friends come running in, it's an extreme high point for them. It's also a rush for the defenders, who know that they've just got to hold on for 10 seconds until invulnerability fades. Invulnerability also sharpens pacing by helping a team push through a defensive stalemate when the enemy team turtles up and refuses to come out of their base. Without a lack of offensive skirmishers, it's easier for the offense to build up the invulnerability charge without interruption. In addition, invulnerability is a great goal for the mode and rewards him for being an effective healer. We encourage the behavior by adding more charge when the medic is healing injured teammates than when he's healing ones who are already at full health. In multiplayer games, the content players consume is largely generated by other players. To enhance this, we added features designed to promote relationships between players. For example, the freeze cam shot of a player's killer helps the player remember specific troublesome opponents. The Nemesis feature adds an additional reminder that certain enemies are more significant than others. It creates a small negative reinforcement loop by giving players an opportunity to score extra points with a revenge kill. We first showed Team Fortress 2 at E3 in 1999, and here we are in 2007, so what took us so long? The short answer is that it took us this long to make something that we were happy with. The long answer requires a look at our development process. At its core is the assumption that we don't really know ahead of time what will be fun. We know what's been fun in the past, but if we've got three ideas on the table, we really can't say for sure which one will be the most fun when they're done. So we focused on developing a repeatable process that we'll find out. It's based on a cycle of constant iteration, where evaluation is done by watching as many people play the game as possible. In developing TF2, we tried out many, many features, a few of which made it into the final product, but most of which were cut. For example, our initial versions of TF2 were focused on trying to build a game around the concept of a commander, a single player who had a real-time strategy view of the battlefield. He would be responsible for building structures and providing a unifying strategy for the team but there were significant design challenges involved. For instance, how do we design the game such that the commander can have fun and at the same time ensure that the players down on the ground can have fun? How do we ensure that the players and the commander value the output of each other? How do we ensure that the game is still fun if you have a terrible commander, or conversely, if you're a great commander with a terrible team? We spent many months working on these and other issues and never really reached a point where we were satisfied. In addition, our game had become overly complex due to our attempts to add a strategy layer deep enough to warrant the addition of the commander in the first place. In the end, we made the hard decision to remove him from the game and moved on. Critical hits are one of the features that resulted from our focus on pacing. The critical hit system attempts to slightly influence the highs and lows of the game by increasing the chance of a critical hit based upon the player's recent performance. In summary, the better you're doing, the more likely you'll continue to do well. This helps create those rare high moments where a single player goes on a rampage and gets three or four kills in rapid succession. The Demo Man is a most versatile combat class, it's capable of rapidly switching from strong offensive pushes to defensive area denial. Denial. He is the only, the only, the only, the only indirect fire capability in the game, allowing him to take out sentry guns around the corner, corner, corner. And his sticky bombs give him a grenade jumping ability similar to that of the soldier's rocket jumps. His sticky bombs can also prevent enemies from moving through doorways, cover a retreat, 
and defend control points even when the demo man is somewhere else. The medic is the main support class. Previous support classes we've designed had a variety of problems. They didn't require much skill because they stayed back in defended areas, which also kept them out of the funnest parts of the game. Worst of all, this meant they weren't even terribly useful because they generally weren't near the players who most needed to be healed. We designed the Team Fortress 2 medic to solve these problems, primarily by focusing on keeping them right in the thick of battle. Additionally, we designed the medigun to be as easy to use as possible so that medics can focus on survival while healing teammates. Virtually no aiming is required, which lets medics concentrate on following their heal target, who has a huge incentive to keep his medic benefactor safe. 